chapter 14, verse 22. It says immediately he made the disciples get in the boat and go before him to the other side. Somebody type other side. While he dismissed the crowds. He sent the disciples one way and he sent the crowd another way. I'll get to that in a second. After he dismissed the crowds, after he dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When at, when the evening came, he was there alone. Can I get about five and a half minutes to preach and teach from the subject of the power of a private prayer life? Family, as we get to this portion of pericope uh, in Matthew, we see uh, Matthew, which was a very good record keeper because he was a tax collector. He's given us his perspective of the story. Right before this, we see, I call it the first fish fry, the family reunion, where he took the two fish and five loaves, where he blessed it, he blessed it, he broke it, then he distributed it. This ain't got nothing to do with the sermon, but I'm going to let somebody know right now, stop asking God to distribute you until you ask him to bless you. But after he bless you, he got to break you. You. I'm going to give you that for free. So now I'm going to let you know here we see him in the text. He's right after he got finished having the fish fry. All the people were excited. They were blessed. They were just enjoying the service and they were just uh, worshiping God. But the Bible says that immediately after this, he made his disciples get in the boat. What am I saying? That sometimes after you do something great for God, you have to know how to make a move. So don't ever get so consumed and go get so stuck on where you are that you forget where you're going. Ah, I'm trying to help somebody. So here, Right after this, Jesus lets us know the significance of distance, the significance of separating yourself. And he's letting us know that it's nothing wrong with being around the people. But sometimes I got to get by myself. See, listen, sometimes I got to spend some time by myself. How are you going to get to know yourself if you don't ever spend no time by yourself? So that's why I always want to un never understood how some people always need somebody to go with them. See, people like that, that's something that's wrong with them. They may not fully love or like themselves, but don't get it twisted. Me and all my different personalities, we love enjoying hanging out with ourselves because I learned that I am never by myself because he walks with me and he talks with me and there are some things God will only tell me when it's just him and I. He, come on y'all, let me help somebody. So now we see that he has to learn how to separate his people. Oh yeah, so now he's separating them. I ain't got no time y'all, let me work the thing. So now he says, listen, he's separating his people. So after he separated them from the crowd, he dismissed the crowd. So you have to learn how to dismiss the crowd because the same crowd that cries Hosanna is the same crowd that cried Hope, crucify. So which means that you are called just to serve the crowd. Let me help your preachers and teachers and servants and leaders and uh, ministry leaders, let me let you know that you are called to serve the crowds, but the crowd is not necessarily going to always serve you. The crowd will sometimes crucify you, but you still got to serve them. But let me get to what I'm trying to get to, the meat and potatoes of this conversation. So here we see Jesus saying that, listen, I have to put them in the boat, so I have to separate them because sometimes there's some developing that only happens when God separates you. How did you get that from the text? Because God lets us know right here, he's teaching us that the subject today is the power of a private prayer life. It's because right before Jesus made the miracle happen, he did what? He prayed. And right after he did the miracle, what did he do? He prayed. What am I? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Say, Pastor, I'm picking it up. Type, Pastor, I'm picking it up. I am putting down this. I am saying that we can't expect to have public power with God if we don't have private prayer with God. Oh, Pastor, no, you didn't. Yes, I did. We cannot expect to have a public public power, have public power for God if we don't spend private prayer with God. There's nothing wrong with public prayer, but there's no way you can have a public prayer life if you don't have a private prayer life. Pastor, you are teaching and preaching way better than they are typing up in the comics. That's why the Bible talks about when he says, don't be like the hypocrites who pray in public so that other people can just see what they're praying. He's saying, listen, I'm not saying that you should not have corporate prayer, but corporate prayer prayer does not precede private prayer. You picking it up, Adrian. I got some more, so get some more. It's going to go down. So what I'm letting you know, 
that God is letting us know that I'm not saying that you should not have a public prayer life, but you should also have a private prayer life. So pastor, you said you put it down. So tell me where you picked it up at. I picked it up right there in the text when it says after he dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself. Oh, y'all missed it. Y'all, my exegetical imagination told me to tell somebody God is telling you it's time to come higher. The crowd might be right here on the surface level, but God is calling you higher. He's calling you to a higher prayer life. He's calling you to a higher study life. He's calling you to a higher level of discipline. He's calling your faith higher. He's calling your focus higher. He's calling you higher. Somebody just type higher in the comments. So he's saying, listen, you got to make sure that you do that. And the Bible says that when he went to the mountain, he went by himself. He made it very clear to separate the crowds, the disciples and himself. He's saying, listen, he went by himself and he went by himself because he understood that there were some things that he needed from God. And in order to get them from God, he needed to spend some time alone with God. I'm trying to let somebody know he's letting us know that you should have that public prayer. You can stand in front of people and pray. That's cool. That's great. But you should never allow that to consume what you do in the personal life. So what you do in personal life, what you do in private will always show in the public. That's why the Bible says, it says, make sure you go in the private room and shut the door and pray. I don't know who need to hear this today, but you need to stop asking God to put you in public if you ain't prepared in private. I'm not gone. I'm not froze. I just wanted you to make sure you pick that up because I just put that thing down. I'm saying stop asking God to put you in positions in public if you are not prepared privately. Why? Why, pastor? Why should not get the blessing? I've been praying for it. I've been trusting for it. What I'm saying is that God may not put you in positions because, uh, listen, certain things you may get you there, but it's not going to always keep you there. And sometimes we're not public, privately prepared. So now we get ourselves in the board meeting and something go don't the way that we plan and now we done lost our cool and that ain't cool to lose your cool and I'm trying to let somebody know before I get up on here don't get it twisted I know you saying pastor you get on here you be fired up but do you know that I get up at five o'clock in the morning just to get the fire started and I came to let somebody know it's time to throw some sticks in the fire because in this season of your life you got to get some things ready in the private because God is about to take you public Somebody type public. You got to type public. Why? What is so dangerous about being in the public? Because when people see you, everybody's not going to always see you the way God sees you. Some people going to criticize you. Some people not going to understand your light. But the praise is this. It don't matter what people see. It don't matter what people say. It's about what God has already said. He said, if I put my word in you, if I put my hands on you, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. I'm trying to preach this morning, Latonya, but in the name of Jesus, I came to let the enemy know that you have prepared in private. So now that you have prepared in private, you are ready for the public. And I came somebody who typed public before you start shouting just yet. Jesus prepared in the private. But what you got to prepare for in the private ain't always pretty in the public. Oh, pastor, I'm trying not to, baby mama. I'm preaching, baby. So what I'm saying is this. There are some things that happen in private that's not going to always be pretty because the Bible teaches us that Jesus, he prepared in private. He prepared for his crucifixion. Teach that thing, pastor. The Bible says that he says, if this cup should pass, let this cup pass. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. So when he was on that cross, he could hold on because he did something in private that helped them hold on in public. See, some people ain't did nothing in the private, so ain't nothing gonna happen in the public. So I need you to know that during this Lenten season, God's gonna keep you, God's gonna cover you, and God's gonna make a way out of no way. He'll be a bridge over troubled water, He'll be a leaning stick in a time of trial. And I need you to remember that there is no public power without any power, any private prayer. Hey, God, there will be no. You can't go. You want to go out here and do these big exploits and do all these. Listen, you can't do all that until you get ready in the private. Hey, so I dare you type in the comments. God prepare me in the private before you put me in the public. Have you ever seen someone 
I'm a preacher, guys. So listen, any preachers on here, any church people on here, no judgment, but let's do some observation. Have you ever seen someone that you knew wasn't prepared? And you could just look and just tell like, oh, my man ain't prepared. I'll be transparent to make somebody feel better. It's been times I've had to preach and I've been unprepared. So thank God for the Holy Spirit who does his job. But sometimes you can tell when a person ain't, even when you have the anointing, you can tell when they're unprepared because it's not put together well. That's like a person you can see if they're not dressed and you'd be like, oh, you was ready? Oh, yeah, I'm ready. No, you ain't. So why are your shoes on the wrong feet? I wasn't prepared. So I have to make sure I'm getting prepared. So listen, let's pray. But as we pray, I I'm praying for preparation. Because somebody type this in the comments. Proper preparation precedes a poor performance. So when I, pro I properly prepare in my private, my performance in public going to be a lot better. So it's prayer time. And as we go to prayer, I challenge you and I encourage you. I can't keep up with y'all comments because y'all is rolling up in here today. The church is full at 8.20 a.m. But we're going to go to God and pray. And I want everybody to take your measure of faith. We need me three minutes to pray. Three minutes. That's all I need. And in these three minutes, I'm asking you to trust and believe that you got to do some work. You got to put some work in. Trust and believe that you got to do something in the back, in the behind. In the behind. Don't think y'all come in here and see Pastor God. Listen, brother, I work. This is a grind. This is not no one hit a quitter. This is my life. This is what I do. This is who I am. So what am I saying? If you want to see some productivity, put in the preparation. So Father in heaven, in Jesus name, we thank you. God, we thank you for just, we thank you for just one more day. And, and just like the songwriter said, hear our humble cry. Yes, Lord. And while on others, thou art calling. Hallelujah. We declaring and we decreeing. Please, Lord, do not pass us by. Father in heaven, in Jesus name, we come to lift you up right now. We lift you up above every problem, above every situation and even above every circumstance. God, we come right now just to acknowledge that you are sovereign, acknowledge that you are in control. And you said in your word that if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, that you will hear from heaven. You will forgive the sin and you he will heal the land. So on today, we come together as your children, touching and agreeing, asking you that you not turn us a deaf ear. For you said in your word, you said a broken spirit and a contrite heart, you will not despise. So you also said that we can come boldly to your throne of grace. So we shall obtain mercy. So on this morning, we obtain the mercy, God, because you said morning by morning, new mercies we see. So we thank you right now for those Siamese twins that follow us each and every day and every way that we go, because grace and mercy, it keeps us, God. So we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you help us to get prepared for what's to come, because God, in this next season, in this pandemic, we didn't know what was coming down the pipe. But so God, help us to be prepared spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, and financially, dear God. Help us to stop putting off tomorrow things that we need to do today. Help us to prioritize our prayer life. Help us to know that you weren't saying that we shouldn't have, uh, we should have a public and a private. Help us to not, help us to put it in the rightful place. Help us to get private. Help us to get some stuff done. Help us to study our word. Help us to get stronger in our prayer. Help Help us to app, apply that word, God, because we need you now like never before, God, as we intercede right now on the least lost and the left out, God. I'm praying right now for those who are watching this video, God. God, you know what they stand in the need of before they even ask, because you said in your word, you said, ask and we shall receive, seek and we shall find, knock and the door shall be open. So, God, I've come asking, seeking and knocking, asking you to open up the doors to pour out blessings that they don't have the room to receive. So, God, please don't give them nothing that they're not ready for. God, please don't give them anything that will allow them to forget about the blesser. God, so I thank you right now for all of the blessings that you continue to pour in our life. Thank you for blessing us with the day that we've never seen. Thank you for blessing us for all the grace and mercy that we've never even could imagine. So thank you for loving us even when we don't love ourselves. So God, lift up every bow down head, dry every tear stained eye, heal every, heal every broken, weak and sick spirit. God, deliver anybody who 
who's bound. Reclaim anybody who has backslidden. Give somebody their focus who's lost it. Give somebody their encouragement who's been discouraged. Give somebody their faith who's got fear. Oh God, I give you glory in advance. Oh yes, I do right now. As I drive the devil out of the minds and the hearts of your people and I rebuke him and I declare and I decree that you shall live and not die. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. All things are working together.